Well, good morning and welcome to today's episode of Transformed. Today, I want to talk to you about an atmosphere of joy. Welcome to today's message with Pastor Jim Balzano. Before I go, I want to also mention thanks to Park Home for our furniture in the studio and Taylor Design and Events for the designing of our studio. And by the way, let me just throw out a little uh, shout out to Taylor Design. Let me tell you something. If you're looking for a, a um, wedding coordinator, an event planner, let me tell you, I was just at an event Saturday evening that they did. Man, they do a great job. You want someone to put on an event that's going to do it with style and first class, they're the ones you want to give a call. You know, I've been talking to you for several weeks now about some of the core values that we recently discovered uh, for our staff here at the church. And I've been giving that to you each week. And here it is again, summed up. We are servant leaders in an atmosphere of love, inspiration, and joy that are in pursuit of kingdom purposes as we work with passion, diligence, and faith because we are compelled by the love of God. You know, one of the things I want for our work atmosphere and the atmosphere of our church in whole is I want it to be a place of joy. I, I mean, I want it to be fun to come to work. Uh, I want it to be fun to come to church. While at the same time, we are very serious about the worship of our God. I want it to be a joyful experience, a joyful event where people have fun with each other. They enjoy each other. It's just got to be an atmosphere of joy. And if we're going to have an atmosphere of joy, I think we must understand what is the source of our joy. You see, the source of our joy as a staff is not our work. The source of our joy is not what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. It's not even that we are blessed to be called and we get paid to do what we do. But the source of our joy has to be Christ. Christ is the source of joy. Think about the scriptures. Before he was even born, when he was in his mother's womb, he caused John the Baptist to leap for joy in his mother's womb. He, the king of the Jews, was the source of joy for the wise men who sought him. When they were both older, Jesus, the bridegroom, was the source of joy for John the Baptist, who was the attendant to the bridegroom. When he entered the city, the source of, he was the source of joy for the disciples who shouted and jumped and praised God. The resurrected Jesus was a source of joy for the apostles. You see, in our lives, the one who saved us must be the source of our joy. The one who called us must be the source of our joy. The one who equips us must be the source of our joy. But then, as a staff and as the under shepherds of the great shepherd, the secondary source of our joy has to be the people that God has called us to lead. I love what King David said. David said that he rejoiced in the saints of God. Paul wrote to the church in Philippi. He said, my beloved brother, whom I long to see, my joy and crown, in this way stand firm in the Lord, my beloved. He told them that they were his joy. Paul told the Thessalonians, for who is our hope or our joy or our crown of exaltation? Is it not even you? You see, the people that Paul led were the source of his joy. If Christ is the source of our joy, then those whom he has allowed us to shepherd must be a source of joy for us. I would suggest when Christ stops being the source of our joy, the people whom we shepherd for him become a burden rather than a source of joy. When Christ and those whom we shepherd stop being the source of our joy, then the work becomes a burden and is no longer joyful. And then there's a third source of joy, and that's each other on staff, that each of us as a staff member, colleagues, partners, that we're a source of joy to each other. Paul said this to his protege, his young son in the faith, Timothy. He said, I long to see you, even as I recall your tears, so that I may be filled with joy. You see, Timothy was a source of joy to Paul. Paul longed to see him. He longed to see his colleague, his spiritual son. He told him, you're my source of joy. You know, we have a staff that's been together for a long time. We love each other. We take joy in each other. Oh, trust me, we get on each other's nerves sometimes as well. But the fact is, we take joy in each other. I take joy in our staff. I take joy in seeing who they are, who they've become, how God has worked in their life. 
I take joy in seeing what they're doing for him. I take joy in seeing them dream and chase dreams. You see, we become a source of joy to each other. Now notice, in each of these three sources, the source of joy is people. Christ is the source of our joy. His people are a source of joy. And each other are a source of joy. But isn't that the way it's supposed to be? The stuff is never the source of joy. The work is not the source of our joy. It must be the people who are the cause and the source of our joy. But it's supposed to be that way, for that's what it was for Jesus. Remember what Hebrews says, Hebrews 12, uh, verse 2? It says, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despised the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Endured the cross, despised the shame. For the joy set before him? What was the joy set before him? It certainly wasn't the pain of the cross. It certainly what he wasn't what he was going to endure. It had to be us, humanity, and the salvation that he was providing by going through the cross. That was the source of his joy. If we are the source of his joy, then he must be the source of our joy. If we are the source of his joy, then those whom he died for must be the source of our joy. As a staff, we have joy in what we do, but we must never lose the joy of who we do it for. You know, you might not be a pastor, but the fact is you too have the same source of joy in your life, Christ. You might not be a pastor, but you too can take joy in the saints of God. You too might not be a pastor, but you also can take joy in those around you. The source of our joy must be Jesus his people, and each other, not what we do. When we have more joy over what we do than who we do it for, the work then takes precedence over him and his people and it becomes a burden. You know, in closing, I've learned two things about joy. One is it's a fruit and it's a gift. As part of the fruit of the Spirit, it is something that is developed within us on an ongoing basis. As the Spirit of God develops us and molds us and shapes us and speaks to us, that all of a sudden part of that fruit is I have joy that isn't from anything this world has to offer. The second thing is, I think it's a gift. I think there are times it's just a gift of God that God gives it to us. You know, Nehemiah told the people, the joy of the Lord will be your strength. I used to kind of wonder what that meant. Is it me thinking about him? Is it me thinking about my salvation? But you know, the more I thought about it and I've experienced some things in my own life, I think I've come to discover that at times it's literally what it says, the joy that belongs to God, he gives it to me and becomes my strength. It's a gift from him. And so I think about joy. An atmosphere of joy has its source in Christ. An atmosphere of joy has a secondary source and that's his people. And then... An atmosphere of joy is both the results of a fruit and a gift that come from God. Let me tell you something. Your home, you can make it a place of joy, an atmosphere of joy. Your workplace, you, believer, you can make it a place of joy. And so here's the deal. Let's, let's purpose in our hearts this week that we are going to be both the recipients and the givers of the joy of the Lord this week. Have a great week. Thank you.